Hi guys, welcome to again to my channel. Uh, my name is uh, Malasa, and uh, today I'm gonna be showing you uh, the uh, design of uh, punching in flat slab using a spreadsheet. Uh, so in the previous uh, tutorial, I have already shown you uh, the uh, design of uh, flat slab using the CSI 2000. Uh, Tony, uh, as per the uh, European uh, Building Code of Standard and the Ethiopian uh, Building uh, Code of Standard. So uh, this is uh, tutorial part Tony 6, which we will be uh, focusing on the design of punching uh, uh, share in flat slab uh, based on the uh, Eurocode and Ethiopian uh, Building uh, Code of uh, Standard. Uh, so if you are a new member for uh, this channel, uh, don't forget to subscribe my channel. And if you subscribe my channel, you will be getting more relevant tutorials which have already been prepared with reference to the modeling and designing of a Tony story building uh, as per the Ethiopian Building Code of Standard and the European Building Code of Standard. And if you are a member of my channel also, don't hesitate at providing me comments and questions in my commenting box so that I will uh, be answering uh, the within a short uh, period of time. Uh, so don't uh, also forget pressing the bell icon uh, so that you'll uh, receive uh, an immediate notification while uploading um, a new videos. Uh, so uh, share uh, all uh, of my videos to your friends so that your friends will be getting more uh, relevant and interesting uh, tutorials which have already been prepared with reference to reinforced concrete structure and uh, steel structure based on the European Building Code of Standard and the Ethiopian Building Code of Standard. Uh, so uh, now let's uh, start uh, the today's uh, tutorials which is the design of punching shear in flat slab. Uh, what is punching shear? So punching is it is a very critical uh, issue, basically in flat slab and in mud foundations. So we need to take care uh, while designing a flat slab and a mud foundation, uh, uh, and we need to uh, go through in depth uh, for checking punching. So punching is your uh, failure is nothing but but it occur in a slab pad. The magnitude of the concentrated load which is coming from the superstructure here. Uh, of the concentrated rows, such as uh, from a colon, exceeds the shear strength of the resistance of the slab or the common punching slab of the slab. That means, suppose if we have VED here, this is the VED which is coming from the superstructure, uh, and uh, if this VED exceeds the, uh, the shear resistance of the concrete, that means if it is greater than or equal to, that is VRD, which is the uh, shear resistance of the concrete, uh, then there will be a punching failure. So uh, the, uh, the, the column punches the slab because uh, the slab uh, 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 cannot resist uh, the uh, uh, the shear which is coming from the superstructures and uh, which exceeds uh, the uh, limit of it is punching uh, shear resistance. Uh, so the column punches so the slab, meaning here, suppose uh, origin uh, here, uh, 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 you know, there is uh, the diagonal uh, here crack here, there is a diagonal, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, punching uh, failure here. Uh, suppose uh, the distance from this up to this is it is 2D based on the Ethiopia building code of standard. Uh, and here from here up to here it is 2D. So punching will occur within the circumference, uh, within the boundary of what? 2D. So, uh, here the bottom part is of the slab, this part, you know, the bottom portion of the slab uh, uh, will uh, fall down to the ground, 
uh, whenever there is a punching failure and what is remain so this part this part will remain that means the uh, this part of the slab you know this part of the slab was previously at this location so due to the punching uh, shear failure it uh, uh, falls down so uh, consequently uh, it results in uh, just uh, a damage a serious damage uh, because uh, there there may be some people so who are working here so when uh, there is a punching uh, shear failure then uh, those of who uh, are uh, going to be working in the room will be damaged so it uh, will result in economical destruction and life destruction so uh, to avoid this uh, punching failures we need to provide or we need to uh, stitch the uh, failed zone of the concrete so this stitching material what we call it is shear reinforcement so the uh, shear resistance of the concrete will be increased by providing a punching shear reinforcement along the failure line of the punching zone so here uh, uh support the, this is what we call it is a punching uh, uh, this boundary what we call it is the punching zone suppose if we have this is the slab and this is a collar so we we'll have a punching zone here that is 2d distance from the face of the corner so this part what we call it is a punching shear zone so we need to provide a shear reinforcement around uh, the uh, punching shear uh, zones in order to prevent the shear uh, failure so the failure plane is located at a certain distance from the perimeter of the column that means from the perimeter of the column it is to to the distance from the face of the columns uh, from the uh, certain distance from the perimeter of the column and has a front shaft failure that means it has uh, a vision uh, or uh, simply it has the the uh, the cone uh, uh, shaft failure pattern so the design of punching shear resistance in flat slab normally involves controlling the thickness of the thickness of the slab or providing punching shear reinforcement so we uh, can use two mechanisms to uh, protect the punching shear failure one is by increasing or by controlling the depth of or the thickness of the slab and the other is by providing punching shear reinforcement on the zone where there is a punching shear failures and generally uh, punching is a three-dimensional brittle failure mechanism leading to bronchiated cone that separated from the slab meaning here this part will be uh, the slab around the collar will be separated from the collar and it falls down to the ground whenever there is a punching shear failure that's apart from the slab the shear crack develops from the tangential flexural crack and propagated into the direction of the compression zone near the column edge constricting a circumferential compression rate with increasing loads once the punching shear resistance is reached the shear crack intersecting the uncracked compression rig leading to a sudden penetration of the column into the slab meaning here Uh, there is here did this is the punching uh, basic parameter uh, so uh, here the the punching shear starts from the face of the column and it propagates up to the basic parameter of the punching zone so here at this point at this point that is VED that is the, the, the shear force which is uh, coming from the superstructure equals to that is V R D C. That means 
the the shear uh, resistance of the concrete will be equal to the shear force which will be coming from the superstructures uh, at which point at this point so beyond this uh, parameter which is beyond the parameter of uh, 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 this line there is no uh, just uh, a need of providing shear reinforcement so we need to provide shear reinforcement uh, uh, within this basic parameter uh, because at this line the uh, the shear resistance of the concrete and the applied shear force are equals and when we come to uh, uh, here uh, j j j j j just we can uh, provide uh, radial uh, arrangements of uh, the shear reinforcement or we can provide uh, the uh, orthogonal arrangements of uh, shear force i mean uh, shear reinforcement uh, in order to uh, uh, just prevent the shear failure so uh, basically uh, uh, in this case, we can use that is shear stand. Uh, that means here we can use start here, and in the case of this, we can use ties. That is reverse. So we uh, either we can use a start rail or we can use reinforcement bar. Here, reinforcement uh, bars are easily available uh, locally, so that's better to use uh, reinforcement uh, bar ties uh, instead of start rail because you know start rails are uh, it is very uh, difficult to obtain because they are prefabricated uh, uh, reinforcements. Uh, uh, reinforcements. Uh, so uh, here, the, the, uh, so uh, this part is it is what it is a compression ring totally. So this is it is basic. It is what we call it is basic or fundamental parameter. So it is a basic or fundamental parameter on which shear reinforcements are going to be provided. Here the recommendation found in European uh, uh, in Europe or two are usually followed when designing punched shear reinforcement. So we need to use uh, Europe or two while uh, we are going to design a punched shear. So to assess whether punch shear reinforcement is necessary, the shear stress in the concrete is computed at the column phase. That means at the phase of the column, uh, we need to uh, calculate the punching shear. Uh, and we need to compare uh, this punching shear with the maximum punching shear resistance of the concrete at this phase. And uh, secondly, we need to also calculate the punching shear at uh, uh, 2D distance from the face of the column. And uh, we need to uh, uh, check and we need to compare also the value of the punching shear uh, stress uh, with the punching shear and resistance of the concrete at 2D distance from the face of the column. So, if the punching shear, uh, which will be induced at the face of the column or 2D distance from the uh, face of the column, uh, exceeds the shear resistance of the concrete, so we need to design our slab for punching shear. Uh, so here, uh, this is uh, the basic or the fundamental uh, punching uh, parameter, and uh, and the uh, outer uh, the outer uh, parameter which uh, uh, is uh, you know developed uh, while there is a punching issue uh, is uh, uh, the most is one point five D from the uh, this uh, that is from the uh, basic parameter. So uh, the, here we have 2D and here we have 1.5D. Uh, so uh, uh, this is the maximum. 
here we need to provide tertiary reinforcement up to uh, a distance which is uh, less than uh, 1.5 d from the uh, outer parameters meaning uh, the shadow reinforcement must be provided starting from this up to the region between these basic parameters and uh, this outer parameter so here uh, the shear stress in the concrete is computed at the column phase. That means at this phase, we need to compute the shear stress at this phase. At the fundamental uh, end, at the fundamental control parameter, at this phase, that means to the distance for the column phase. So, uh, two calculations are required. One is punching at the face of the column, and the other is punching at the basic parameter. So the, pos the position of outside control parameter where shear reinforcement is no longer needed. So we need, uh, we should not provide shear reinforcement uh, out of uh, the uh, outer parameters. So the position of the outer control parameter where sh shear reinforcement is no longer needed, that is U out. Here, this is U out. That is the outer parameter is then determined if reinforcement is necessary so uh, we need to provide our reinforcement with 2d or uh, we may provide some reinforcement between uh, the uh, basic parameter and the outer parameter so shear starts are placed starting at 0.3 or 0.5d from the column faces to within 1.5d of the outer control parameter, meaning, see, we need to provide shear reinforcement starting from the faces. Uh, we need to uh, provide uh, the first shear reinforcement at a distance 0.3 to 0.5d from the face of up, from the face of the color. So the first shear reinforcement provided here and the second here and here and here just like this uh, uh, up to up to the point where that is 1.5 d from that is 1.5 times d from the outer parameter so the last reinforcement bar should be located here that is 1.5 d from the outer parameter the most cost effective approach will often be that is radial arrangement so this is uh, when we uh, arrange uh, reinforcements by uh, shear reinforcement bar radially we will be cost effective so with raised based at 30 degree 45 degree apart to meet this requirement extra secondary layers are installed as necessary because Uh, here the number of that is the number of stud rails the number of stud rail will be calculated from CSI safe or using a spreadsheets uh, so thus rails will be arranged either radially or orthogonally but when we arrange radially we need to uh, take into our consideration the maximum uh, spacing between the rails so here within the basic parameter the distance between two consecutive uh, uh, start rail should not exceed 1.5 times d and uh, out of the basic parameter out of the basic parameter the distance between two consecutive start rails should not exceed uh, uh, two times the effective depth of the slab. Uh, so, uh, so, in order to achieve these uh, requirements, uh, so we need to uh, uh, provide the secondary rails. That means, for example, if this distance exceeds 2D, so we need to provide the secondary rails 
that is we need to provide secondary rails so, so that the distance between the two consecutive rails will be reduced that means it should not exceed the maximum limit which is provided by the code uh, so all those are the uh, the basic rails and all those are the secondary rails uh, so here the distance uh, here as we said previously you know the first rail must be located at 0 0.3 up to 0 0.5 d uh, from the face of the column see the first one is located it the second one is located it and just like this so we need to uh, uh, place the start rails uh, by considering the maximum spacing uh, which is provided by the Ethiopian building code of standard and European building code of standard. So the maximum uh, uh, spacing between the two uh, consecutive uh, start rails uh, in uh, uh, radial direction should not exceed 0 0.75 times the effective dose of the slab. So D is the effective dose of the slab which will be calculated based on uh, the uh, arrangement of reinforcement in x and in y direction uh, so uh, uh, this is uh, uh, you know the basic or the fundamental control parameter which is uh, to the uh, distance from the face of the column and uh, this one is uh, the outer uh, parameter up to uh, which the shear reinforcement will be uh, uh, placed so here uh, this is uh, the radial uh, uh, arrangement of the shear status or we can we can replace that shear status with uh, shear reinforcement that, that means reverters so we can use also reinforcement bar and generally the flowing check uh, should be checked out so while uh, we are going to design a punching shear uh, those uh, pointers must be checked one ensure that maximum punching shear stress is not exceeded that means vd must be laser the the shear resistance of the maximum shear resistance of the concrete at the column parameter meaning suppose here this is a slab and here this is a column so the punching shear here around the parameter of the column should not exceed the maximum shear resistance of the concrete at this location that means VED. VED is nothing but it is the shear stress which will be developed at the periphery of the column. And VRD max is it is the maximum shear resistance of the concrete. A second, determine whether punching shear reinforcement is required. That means whether VED is greater than VRDC at the basic parameter that is UA. Here we have also another parameter that is the second parameter that is u1 which is 2d distance from the face of the the column so we need to calculate also the punching shear which will be induced at this parameter and we need to compare this punching shear with the uh, the shear resistance of the concrete if the the ved which is the applied shear uh, force uh, or the applied shear uh, shear stress exceeds the uh, shear resistance of the concrete at the basic parameter u1 so we need to provide punching shear reinforcement and the third determine whether punching shear reinforcement is required that means whether vd is greater than vrgc at the successive parameter to establish u out meaning and the third parameter which will be the third parameter will be here with this one which is u out that is u out so we need to calculate uh, u out based on the uh, punching shear reinforcement required that means vd greater than vrt see at a successive parameter to establish u out basically u out can be calculated uh, using CSI save or uh, using manual calculation but that is better to use CSI save so uh, uh, here the reinforcement must be extended uh, up to uh, 1.5 D 
from uh, you out. That means we need to provide shear reinforcement uh, uh, between the face of the collar and 1.5D distance from you out. Where required provide reinforcement such as VED is less than or equal to VRD CS. That means we need to provide shear reinforcement uh, uh, till the shear force or the shear uh, stress less or equal to the shear resistance of the uh, reinforced concrete slab. And now here, the, that is VD is the, that is the shear stress here, and VRD CS is that is the shear resistance of the reinforced concrete slab. Uh, and VRD max is the design value of the maximum punching shear resistance expressed as stress. The, that is VRD CS equals to just this formula, we can use this formula, and we have already developed a spreadsheet just to design uh, the uh, flat slab for punching shear. And here, uh, SW is the area of uh, shear reinforcement in one parameter. That means, so we need to uh, calculate the, the punching shear, uh, uh, which is uh, uh, required in one parameter. And SR is, it is the radial spacing of uh, parameters of shear reinforcement. So SR is, which is the radial spacing, meaning. So for this is a color. So here uh, we'll have radial arrangements, just like this, radially. If this is the, you know, the parameter. So SR is, it is the radial spacing of the parameter. So uh, here uh, we may have a shear reinforcement here, we may have shear reinforcement here, we may have shear reinforcement here. So the distance between this shear uh, reinforcement and this shear reinforcement, what you call it is radial spacing. So FYD, AF, that is effective design strength of the reinforcement, meaning 250 plus 0.25D, uh, it must be less or equal to FYWD. And uh, this the mean effective depth into orthogonal direction. And U1 is it is the basic control parameter at 2D from the loaded area. So this what we call this the loaded area. This one. This is the loaded area. And sign uh, A, which is equal to one for vertical shear reinforcement. Uh, so we need to uh, arrange our shear reinforcement vertically, meaning. Uh, the angle is, it is 90 degrees, so sine of 90 degrees is equal to 1. Where required, each parameter should have a SW, which is equal to VET minus 0 0.75. So basically, we can use this formula to determine the amount of shear reinforcement area per parameter of the uh, shear zone. So the punching shear resistance of a slab should be assessed for a basic control section. So the design punching shear resistance may be calculated as form. So VRDC, which is equal to CRDC times K times 100 times reinforcement area ratio, that is row one, which is, uh, which is, that is row one, row X times row Y under the square root. So this is the value of row one. And FCK, to the power of 1 over, sorry, plus K1 times sigma Cp. So this value must be greater than V min plus K1 times sigma Cp. So uh, we have already uh, developed a spreadsheet in order to uh, calculate the uh, uh, amount of uh, shear reinforcement required to uh, withstand the uh, applied punching uh, stress. And here there is uh, uh, also uh, uh, another formula, uh, which is uh, uh, basically uh, used to uh, calculate the uh, amount of uh, the punching shear uh, resistance. So the punching shear resistance is limited to the maximum value here, that is VD, which is equal to beta times VED uh, over uh, the basic uh, parameter 
time the effective dose and it must be laser BRT mark that means the maximum uh, shear resistance of the concrete so uh, this is at the face of the column uh, which is adjacent to the the column face and VRD max which is equal to 0 0.5 times V times FCT so uh, uh, here uh, V is nothing but it is 0 0.6 into 1 minus FCT over 250 and FCT is that the design the strength of the concrete is which is alpha CC times FCT over gamma of uh, gamma M which is uh, the material safety factor here gamma which is 1.5 here and alpha CC it is 1 so basically all those parameters can be taken from the code so you know it is uh, uh, it is uh, for an interior column it is the including minimum periphery which is the, the this the surrounding uh, uh, parameter of the column for an edge column you know it, which is equal to c2 c2 is nothing but it is the least dimension of the column here this is c2 so c2 plus 3d which is less or equal to C2 plus to C1. So this is uh, the uh, provided formula to calculate uh, the uh, 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 the uh, periphery uh, of the uh, column face. And for corner uh, uh, column, here we can use a unit which is equal to 3D. Yeah. But this value must be less than C1 plus C2. So C1, C2 are the column dimensions as shown in the figure below. So uh, this is the larger of the depth of the column and this is the least dimension of the, uh, the column. So we need to uh, take into our consideration the arrangements of this pattern in order to calculate uh, the uh, enclosing uh, uh, parameter of the column. And beta is nothing but it is the load increasing. Uh, the load increment factor which depends on the location of uh, the, the column. So for corner column, we can use beta which is equal to 1.5. And for H column, which is uh, we, uh, that is we need to take beta equal to 1.4. And for uh, the interior uh, column, uh, beta equals to 1.15. So having all this uh, parameter, uh, then we can substitute here and we can uh, uh, calculate the punching shear resistance at the faces of the corner. And, uh, and we need to compare this value with VRD max, uh, uh, which uh, can be obtained uh, by this formula. So if uh, this value, that is if it is less than VRD max, so the, uh, there will not be uh, a need of designing uh, the uh, the faces of uh, the column for uh, punching uh, shear. And if it exceeds, so we need to uh, calculate uh, and we need to design uh, the periphery of the column and phase for uh, punching the shell. So thank you very much. Uh, this is uh, uh, for uh, the introduction part of the punching uh, design of a flat slab. Uh, so uh, let's proceed to the spreadsheet, just uh, the way how to design uh, the uh, punching uh, uh, share of the Philatus lamp. I uh, here uh, I have uh, already uh, prepared uh, a spreadsheet uh, which is uh, uh, going to be used for the design of uh, uh, punching uh, uh, using uh, uh, Excel spreadsheet. Uh, so uh, here I have uh, one example uh, I'm going to be show you uh, the design of punching for the specified uh, flat slab. Uh, here, uh, this is uh, you know the uh, the questions that uh, we're going to design punching for a specified uh, uh, location of column. So uh, here, the uh, question said that for the flat slab with the general arrangements as shown below. Here, this is the arrangements of the flat slab. I think the the color is it is black. Uh, so uh, uh, here, uh, this is the flat slab anyway. Uh, the flat slab having a column uh, located here, 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 and here. Uh, the slab uh, continues in this direction and it is discontinuous at this uh, direction. 
so uh, the um, uh, you know the, the 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 area that we are going to design for punching is uh, this color that is the the, the edge color so uh, now uh, for the flat slab with the general arrangement as shown below let us design the punching shear for the color one b1 b1 is uh, this is b1 which is the edge color uh, b1 giving the flowing design information uh, the ultimate axial force, that means uh, the axial force which is coming from the superstructure, uh, which is the vertical shear, is VED, which is equal to 400 kilonewton. And the thickness of the slab is, uh, uh, the thickness of the flat slab is 250 uh, mm. The dimension of the column is 450 by 230. This is, uh, you know, the uh, cross section of the column, which is located at the point where we are going to design the punching. So the reinforcement of the slab in the longer direction, uh, that is in uh, in y direction, is uh, it is diameter 60 at a spacing of 150 millimeter is provided. So the area of the reinforcement or per unit width is it is 1340 millimeter square. Reinforcement of the slab in the shorter direction, that is along the uh, the shorter direction, is diameter 60 at 175 mm. That means the area of the steel provided per meter width is of the slab is 1149 millimeter square per meter width. Is. The grade of concrete provided is it is C30 and the yield strength of the reinforcement is, it is 500 megapascal. So the concrete cover used for the design of the slab is it is provided around it is uh, 25 mm. So having all this information, just we can design punching at this location. That means we need to design punching for this flat slab at the location of this column. So here we can go to the spirit sheet. Here all the red kernels are the input data. So we need to provide all this data and all the rest data are the outputs, so which are the result of the, uh, the input data. Uh, so uh, uh, now uh, let's uh, uh, describe the parameter one by one. So here, uh, this is the gamma that uh, that is the safety factor of the material, which is one point five for concrete, and alpha CC is it is the design uh, uh, factor, the factor which is used to calculate the design and strength of concrete. That means this is the gamma that is the safety factor. And alpha CC is it is the design factor. Uh, you know, alpha CC it, it, it is the design factor which is used to calculate the design strength of the concrete, which is FCD, FCD, which is equal to alpha CC multiplied with FCK multiplied with or divided by gamma. So this is the uh, the formula which is used to calculate the design strength of uh, the concrete so alpha cc is nothing but it is 0 0.8 i mean 0 0.85 or it is one so in this case i can use one and and the other is the cover which is uh, at least 25 mm and fck is it is 30 megapascal Reinforcement yield strength is that is FYK for the steel is it is 500. Reinforcement bar diameter which is provided for uh, the design of the flat slab is it is 60 mm. And the location of the column is it is at the edge, meaning here uh, we'll have different uh, location of column. But what this is, uh, you know, the slab. If the location of the column is here. So this is what? It is B1. So it is H column. It is the H column. So uh, here, uh, the location of the column is at the edge. And for the column, which is located at the edge, beta value will be, it is 1.4. So this beta value is nothing but it is load increment factor. 
and a, uh, we may have a coronal colon here or we may have an interior colon here for the interior column beta values it is 1.15 and for uh, the corner column beta values it is around that is 1.5 and here uh, 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 now the uh, the beta values it is provided so here this is the beta value and the ultimate limit is set actual load of uh, the column is it is 400 kilometer which is the vertical uh, uh, shear force which will be acting uh, at the location of at the location of the place where we are going to design the punching uh, and the ultimate limit axial load is this one uh, the thickness of the slab is 250 mm the dimension of the column uh, is provided here that is d which is equal to d or uh, c1 is it is 450 millimeter and b or c2 uh, which is equal to 230 millimeter so uh, here uh, c1 and c2 meaning uh, c1 is uh, it is unlock uh, the depths and uh, b is uh, it is uh, unlock the widths of the the column and rebar in the longer direction is that is diameter 60 uh, cc 150 uh, is provided here it is 1340 millimeter square rebar in the in the shorter direction of the slab is provided with this much amount of area so the effective depth of the slab in y direction uh, i mean the effective depth of the slab in uh, y direction dy which is equal to uh, the total density minus the clear cover minus u over 2 so this is the uh, effective depth of the slab in y direction and the effective depth of slab in y uh, i mean uh, the above is in y direction and the lower is in x direction so the effective depth of this is x so the effective depth of a slab in x direction is nothing but it is d minus cover minus d so uh, it provides it is 2000 uh, it is around 2009 just here we can click this one so that that, that be, uh, which is the depth of the slab minus uh, the uh, cover minus half the diameter of the main bar and when we come to also the lower one this one the depth minus the cover uh, minus the the diameter of the bar so it provides 209 209 and uh, the reinforcement area in y direction is that that is rho which is uh, it can be calculated just like this which is rho in uh, y direction which is equal to uh, the uh, reinforcement area that is area of steel area of steel in y direction divided by uh, that is b times what b times d where d is the effective depth of the slab and b is it is the unit width is, which is 1000 so when we calculate it it provides this much amount and row 1x uh, also row 1x that is in x direction the area of steel uh, in x direction divided by b times d and it provides this value and so row 1 uh, will be uh, so uh, the uh, row will be equal to the average of the two this plus this over two it provides this value and the value of k which is equal to 1.969003111 so how it comes just uh, 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 it can be calculated using this formula and this is provided in the code and the average depth of the slab as uh, i have said before uh, this plus this divided by two which is equal to 2000 30 millimeter and uh, so we need to uh, verify uh, the shear uh, at uh, the faces of the color as well as at uh, the basic uh, parameter of the shear zone so first i need to check the first verification at the face of the corner that means u naught u naught is nothing but it is the parameter around the corner so suppose this is the corner and uh, you notice it is the parameter the parameter around the the column that means 2 c1 plus 2 c2 so this is what it is you know for what 
from interior corner from the the edge corner for the the edge corner u not equal to for the edge corner this plus this plus this meaning this is the depth which is d that means 2d plus b so this is the u not that is the parameter uh, so the first verification check here at you know that a minimum enclosed parameter of the color will be equal to that is VED, which is the reduced tissue resistance. Uh, VED, which is equal to beta, that means the load increment factor for the edge uh, the color multiplied with VED over U0 multiplied with the effective depth. And this value, this value must be less than VRD max. VRD max is nothing but it is. The maximum shear stress or the, the maximum shear resistance of the concrete at the faces of the column. So U naught is equal to that is C uh, two plus three uh, D uh, average. Uh, it must be laser C two plus two D, which is equal to uh, which is equal to D is the effective depth of the slab. So which is equal to C two plus three D AV. So how it comes? Uh, uh, simply uh, it is taken from the code. So C2 plus 2D which is equal to 11 uh, 1130 uh, millimeter square. So and uh, you know is nothing but it is 869 uh, mm. So uh, uh, the uh, the basic parameter uh, the, the first ver ver verification must be uh, checked uh, within the parameter of 869 millimeter. So, uh, VED, which is equal to that is the first verification of shear at the faces of the color here at this zone, uh, which is uh, uh, which is equal to 2.8 mega Pascal. So, simply using this this formula. So, when we use this formula, we will get VED, which is equal to 2.8 mega Pascal. So. Uh, this value VRD uh, VED, which is the uh, the maximum shear stress at the faces of the column, uh, must be uh, uh, less than the VRD max. So, so VRD max is nothing but it is 0 0.5 V times FCD. Uh, this uh, value uh, provide uh, and this uh, equation provided this value that is 5.8 megapascal. So we can check uh, this this VED and uh, VRD max. So the status will show that VED, which is less than VRD max, which is okay. So our first verification is perfect. And when we come to the second verification, that means we need to check the shear at U1. U1 is nothing but it is 2D distance from the face of the column, which is called the basic or the fundamental uh, parameter of uh, this edge column, this column. So U1 is nothing but it is C2 plus 2 C1 plus 5 times 2D. So this can be taken from the code. That is from the Ethiopian building code of a standard. The, uh, the basic or the fundamental parameter equals to the width of the column. I mean the width of the column plus 2 times the depth of the column plus pi times 2D. 2D. So uh, how it comes here this is the color that is the edge color so uh, here just like this here this is what u1 which is uh, that is to the from the face of the color to the distance from the face of the column. So here we can calculate uh, this parameter and we need to calculate also this parameter this plus I mean this plus this plus this plus this plus this plus this one. So this is what it is C1. This is C1. This is C1. And this is C2. And this one is what? 
that is here we have a colon here and this is uh, you know c1 this is also c1 this is c2 So here we have this punching parameter. And here we have another punching parameter. Here this part, here this part, and here this part. So this is, uh, uh, you know, th this parameter is, how much is it? It is. Two pi r over four. So this cancel this one. How much is it? Pi r over two. R is nothing but it is r equals how much? It is two d because it is two d distance from the face of the column. That means this value is it is two d. From the parameter of from the basic parameter to the face of the column is this 2d, which is specified in the code. So r is equal to 2d. So we can substitute 2d in the place of what? r in the place of r. So that is 2d 2d times what? 5 over 2. Then this cancels this one. So this parameter will be equal to what? 5d. So, how many such kind of parameters are there? Two. So, total equals what? Two pi. So, u1 equals to c1 plus c2 plus, that is uh, again c1 here plus, this is pi d and this is pi d to pi d. So how much is it totally? Uh, two C one plus C two plus two pi. D. This is the basic parameter. I mean the basic parameter uh, at two D distance from the face of the column. So this is just similar to what this one. That is C two plus 2c1 plus 2 pi d and this is for the edge corner for the corner corner it will be uh, different and for the interior corner it will be different so it depends on the uh, the parameter uh, of uh, the shear zone so uh, using this formula you are uh, so we can uh, calculate vet that means the shear at to to the distance from the face of the column which is equal to beta times vet which is the vertical shear I mean the vertical uh, shear force divided by u1 uh, times the effective depth and it must be laser uh, v rdc which is the uh, the shear uh, capacity of the concrete so this value will be pro uh, will uh, this uh, formula will provide 1.06 megapascal so this is the concrete shear stress at 2d distance from the face of the color here at this at this point so uh, we can check the status uh, uh, does this uh, 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 induced shear stress exceed the maximum uh, or not? we can check it so now the status uh, uh, said that shear reinforcement is required uh, why uh, you know VED exceeds uh, D uh, shear resistance of the concrete. So we need to provide the shear reinforcement. Either uh, we need to provide shear reinforcement or uh, I mean uh, the uh, uh, rebarthized or the shear status. It depends on uh, uh, you know the availability of the material. So uh, so we have already checked the uh, the shear stress at the face of the column. That is at u zero and at two d distance from the face of the column. That means at the around 
the permit the basic or the fundamental parameter of the punching zone so uh check should uh at you out at uh sure river no longer required that, that means so the uh, the third verification that we need to uh, calculate is you out so you out is nothing but it is the place where the uh, induced shear stress equals to the shear resistance of the concrete uh, at uh, a distance of 1.5 times d meaning suppose here we have this is the column and here you know this is u naught i mean u1 and we may have and this is what u out u out is nothing but it is the place where Sure, reinforcements will not be required. So, sure, reinforcement will be required uh, at up to the point here. This is 1.5 t. So, uh, the distance uh, between the place where the last reinforcement will be placed and the outer parameter will be less 1.5 times d. That is, uh, so we need to. Uh, provide our reinforcement up to this point. So we need to calculate this parameter. That means the outer effective parameter of the shear zone. So this parameter, which is equal to U out. So after calculating U out, it is possible to calculate this distance. This distance, that is the distance from the face of the column up to the location of the last shear reinforcement. So uh, how can we calculate U out? Simply, you out can be calculated by using this formula. So this is provided in the code. So we will see it later if it is necessary uh, during the uh, calculation of the punching uh, shear uh, uh, during the design of punching for 20-story building. So you out is nothing but it's equal to which is beta times V uh, divided by D times V R D C. So this is the formula. So rearranging this, so u out is equal to uh, c2 plus 2c1 plus pi times r out. So uh, simply this is, uh, you know, uh, here this is r route. You know, the distance from this to this is, it is r route, which is this one. Or simply this one. This is r route. Here, this is a route. So, a route, u out is equal to u out is, u out is, is equal to c2 plus 2c1 plus 5 times a route. Meaning, meaning, here we need to calculate this parameter and this parameter. As previously, uh, we have already calculated this one. So, uh the distance from this one here we need to calculate this distance which is c c1 that means plus this distance that means c1 again plus this distance to c1 this distance this distance that is to c1 plus this parameter is the outer parameter, this one. How it comes? That means 2 pi r, which is the full the full uh, parameter of the circle. And uh, here the quarter one is, it is divided by 4. And r is how much? Which is r round. This is R round, which is R round. So, how many such kind of parameters are there? Two. So, multiplied with two. So, this it cancels this one. So, pi R round. So, u out u out is equal to two C one. Uh, 
plus plus uh, C2 C2 which is this one C2 plus I add on so here this one C2 C2 plus 2C1 plus 5 times R route. So R route equals to using this for, for formula, which is 1006 millimeter. So here the portion of the outer parameter of reinforcement from the column, that means, you know, here this one is the location of the last shear reinforcement. So the distance from this up to this will be calculated. That means R. R is nothing but the distance from here up to here. So R equals to uh, that is R equals to 687.37 millimeter. And the maximum radial spacing of the reinforcement that means SR max will be provided that is 155. How it comes? So simply using this formula, meaning the average depth of the slab minus 1.5 times B22. B22 is nothing but, uh, which is B, sorry, B38. 38 is, it is this one, that is a route minus 1.5 times the effective depth of the slab. So previously, I have already said that R can be calculated at, uh, using R route. Suppose here this is the color. This is U1. And this is U out. And this is the location of the last shadow reinforcement, which is this distance is 1.5 B, which is less than 1.5 D. So here, this one, that is R, which is, is uh, R, which is, is equal to R route minus this one, which is R equal to R route, the distance from this up to this, minus the distance from this up to this which is which is the r that means r is nothing but it is the place where the last reinforcement will be located this point it is not the basic uh, the radius of the basic parameter it is the radius of uh, the parameter which is uh, located between the basic parameter and the outer parameter so this is r so uh, SR max will be equal to 155 millimeter. How it comes? Simply, just uh, uh, it is provided in the code. So the code specifies that. So the maximum radial spacing of the reinforcement SR max should not exceed 0 0.75 times D. This one. If this is the radial spacing. Here, this is spacing should not exceed. Uh, 0 0.75 times the effective depth of the slab, and this is the radial spacing. And here, when we come to the rad, the uh, the tangential spacing here, this is the ta tangential sp spacing S T. So uh, the tangential uh, uh, spacing depends on the uh, the parameter. So within the the, the basic parameter, uh, the uh, spacing of shear reinforcement that means. The tangential spacing of the shear reinforcement should not exceed 1.5 times d. That means with the basic parameter and out of the basic parameter and with the outer uh, parameter, the tangential spacing of shear reinforcement should not exceed 2d. That means here it is provided that the distance between these entities it should be less than 2d. And the distance between uh, the this river and this river within this basic parameter should be less than 1.5 d 
So this is specifically, uh, uh, you know, provided in Ethiopian Building Code of Standard and European Building Code of Standard. So our reinforcement will be, uh, the last reinforcement will be located at 1.5 times the distance from the outer perimeter. That is 1.5 D. So we need to place the last reinforcement at 1.5 D from the face of the outer parameter. So here, the uh, within U1 parameter, the link spacing around the parameter, that was uh, U1 is nothing but it is the basic parameter, which is this one. This is U1. This is U1. So, uh, the link spacing around the parameter, which is equal to C tangential, must be less than 2D, which is, uh, it must be less than 2D. So, uh, using the formula, we can get, that is for 126. This is, you know, the, maxi the maximum tangential spacing of the uh, shear reinforcement. And when uh, we go down, uh, so use, uh, that is S tangential maximum, that is 420, or uh, we can uh, use the lesser value. But when uh, we use a very less value, we will not be economical. So that is better to take the value closer to the maximum uh, tangential uh, distance. And the minimum area of uh, a link leg, which is equal to area of uh, the shear reinforcement minimum, must be greater than 0 0.053 uh, times a CT times uh, SR times the square root of FCK over FYK. So this formula is provided in the code. So you can uh, see it uh, uh, just uh, directly uh, uh, at the European Building Code of Standard 2 or uh, the European Building Code of Standard 2. That is so this value will uh, uh, come. Uh, that is 37.79614 millimeter square. So this is uh, the area of uh, area of a single leg. So this is the area of a single leg. So a single leg means here we have, for example, if we have S therapy here, so this is two leg, one, two. So single leg means this one. So the area of one single leg will be, that is 37.79. So uh, the area of uh, a steel a minimum for uh, of a single leg will be that is seventy eight point five millimeter square per bar. If end one leaf, we are going to use diameter ten because we have already specified the diameter of what? the the shear reinforcement here. That is the diameter of shear reinforcement is that is ten millimeter for ten millimeter diameter. We have. Uh, the cross-sectional area of 78.5 millimeter square. So having this in mind, so having this in mind, we can provide diameter 10 millimeter rebar at a spacing of 400 tioni. We need, see here we have uh, calculated the tangential spacing of the shear reinforcement and uh, we have already uh, calculated the radial uh, uh, spacing of the shear reinforcement that is 155 so uh, here uh, this 155 is related with what this one this one we have already calculated that is s uh, radial and we have already calculated that is 420 uh, for uh, this case that is uh, the the tangential sat max sat max is it is 420 and SR max is, it is 155. So we can use uh, for our detailing purpose, that is 100 millimeter. So 100 millimeter spacing. So we can uh, put the detail of this uh, shear uh, reinforcement or shear studies uh, uh, using uh, a schematic diagram. So just to clarify it. Here, uh, you know, this is the arrangements of, uh, here, this is the, 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 the uh, uh, you know, we have two arrangements. One is orthogonal arrangement. That is orthogonal arrangement. And the other is 
That is radial arrangement. So radial means it is curved. It is curved. That is orthogonal means it is cross type, which is just like this. So this type of arrangement, what you call it, is radial arrangement. So in radial arrangement, S uh, tangential, that we have already calculated, which is what? S tangential, that is the maximum is, it is 400 what? 20 mm. And S radial is, it is 155, but in our case, we can use 100 millimeter. So the distance between this and this must be less than what? The distance between two consecutive uh, shear reinforcement in radial direction should be less than 0 0.75 d. So 100 millimeter is less than 0 0.75 d. So it is adequate enough. And in tang in uh, tangential direction, uh, the the maximum should be 400 20. But within the basic parameter, this value must be less than what 1.5 times d and out of the basic par parameter and uh, within the uh, the outer uh, parameter the value should be less than what it is 2d so uh, we need to uh, check the maximum limit of the radial in the tangential spacing of shear reinforcement so how many uh, so how many shear reinforcements are required here based on our calculation that is uh, the, the number of the number of uh, that is 10 millimeter reverse center center 420. So, how many, how many number of uh, shear reinforcement per parameter are required? Here it is seven. How it comes? The number of diameter 10 millimeter bar per parameter is it is seven. How it comes? Simply by uh, taking this total area, you know, the area of shear reinforcement per, per parameter divided by. A single area of reinforcement bar that means uh, this divided by 78 and it provides around what seven so seven shear reinforcement uh, leg per parameter will be required just come to here here the number of uh, shear reinforcement leg per parameter is 87 so we can count it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven shear reinforcement leg per parameter will be required in tangential direction. And in radial direction, how many shear reinforcement legs are required? So it depends on what? It depends on the distance between the faces of the collar and the location of the last reinforcement bar. That is SR is that is R is it is calculated it before that is the position of the outer parameter of reinforcement from the column phase r is equal to what? 687 so we can uh, lay uh, we can put the shear reinforcement until we arrive at a distance of 687 from the face of this column so 687 is nearly it is around here here around here so the distance between this and this will be what it is that is 687 687 so the distance must be greater than 687 it should not be less than 687 and if it uh, if we reduce uh, this distance so we are exposing uh, the uh, portion of uh, the slab for shear because there will be some portion of the slab which will not be reinforced so in that case punching tailor will happen. So we need to take the, the minimum 687 uh, millimeter distance from the face of the column to the last location of the shear reinforcement. So we can use 700 millimeter roughly. And we will see it in AutoCAD. So here, so this is the, the uh, radial arrangement of the shear reinforcement for the edge column. So if our colon is, uh, you know, interior, so we can just make it circle just like this. So here, this will come to this one, 
and this will come to this one this will come to this one and here this will come to this one just like this so if it is circle or if it is an interior column and if it is a corner column so we can uh, just avoid this portion so we can avoid this portion and we can take this portion only if it is what corner column so uh, we are uh, designing for the uh, edge column that is why uh, just the punching uh, parameter will be half circle so this is uh, you know the the design based on the reinforcement uh, uh, shear reinforcement bar so or we can use uh, shear start instead of shear reinforcement so shear studies are uh, those are prefabricated and ineffective uh, the uh, shear uh, uh, reinforcement uh, material which will be uh, used uh, on site so uh, here uh, this is for the corner uh, column uh, that means the punching at uh, the corner column and this one is uh, you know the punching at the interior column so uh, here uh, we can uh, this one is the plan view and when we uh, come to the the corresponding uh, orthogonal arrangements uh, of the shear reinforcement just it looks like this one for for the interior uh, column and for the corner column uh, if we uh, use an orthogonal arrangements of shear reinforcement just it looks like this one uh, so uh, here the number of uh, shear uh, reinforcement leg is uh, as we have said it is seven for uh, each corner so here for every for at every uh, status of uh, reinforcement uh, we uh, will have uh, how many uh, how many shear uh, reinforcement legs are required for every sets of uh, reinforcement about just like this here this is what you call it is status of status of a river which is used to type the shear reinforcement here we need to have the lower bar here and we need to have the upper bar here so here we need to this is what a river ties shear river ties so this is you know the reinforcement which contributes for shear and uh, those are uh, sets of river that are used to uh, tight the shear reinforcement so at every set of river how many shear, shear legs are required here we have totally 700 we have said already 700 millimeter so just we can go to the outer bar Simply here, we have already uh, said here seven river ties are required per per set per parameter per parameter. That means this is one. Here, this is you know, the basic parameter. What you call it is U1. U1. And here we have a colon here. So this is U0. And here we have U out. This one is what? It is U out. So, and here we have. We have, you know, the parameter between the basic parameter and the outer parameter where the rust reinforcement bar is located here. And we have the other here and here and here. So, you know, the first shear reinforcement must be located at uh, a distance of what? 
the distance between this and this this must be between 0 0.3 out to 0 0.5 times d this is specified in the code so this is the effective depth of, depth of the slab so we can take 0 0.5 d and here the distance between this and this as we have said which is 100 millimeter because previously we have calculated 155 for the sake of calculation we can take 100 millimeter and this one is 100 this one is 100 this one is 100 and the distance between this and this as we have, we have previously said it is 700 this is 700 700 which is the the location of the last reinforcement bar here so the distance between the location of the last reinforcement bar and the face of the colony is it is 700 millimeters so how many uh, number of your legs are required here just uh, we can divide 700 millimeter so we we can take the, the, the distance from here up to here so we i have already calculated for the easiness of the calculation so we can uh, elaborate it on the drawing So here, so first I need to uh, calculate here, this is the color, and here this one is, it is the basic parameter, which is 2D distance from the face of the color, and here this one is U out, this one is U out. So uh, U out is nothing but it is what 1007. We have already calculated it here. Just U out is here. This one. Where is U out? Uh, U out the outer parameter of the short one is uh, uh, sorry. R route is here. This one. Here R route is it is 1006 which is 1007 roughly here it is 1007 r route that means from the face of the column to the outer parameter so and this one is also here the distance between this and from the face of the column is it is what it is around 426 so how it comes simply r minus this distance that is the last location is this one here 308 308 is it is the distance between the last reinforcement bar and the outer parameter and it must be less than 1.5 d which is specified in the code and so uh, d is it is 230 so it is 320 millimeter so in this case it is what the, ac the actual provided spacing between the last reinforcement bar and the outer parameter is 308. So it is okay because 308 is less than 390. So uh, arranging uh, radially with a spacing of 100 millimeter, uh, how many uh, shear legs are required? One, two, three, four, five, six. So six shear legs are required per status of river so in the, so we can uh, we can draw the parameter using those points so the first parameter is this one and the second parameter is this one the third parameter is this one so all the three parameters are within the basic parameter and uh, uh, outside of the basic parameter we'll have three parameter here so at every parameter we will have seven shear legs seven short legs that means here we can count one two three four five six seven so we have already provided seven uh short legs per every parameters so we need to check whether the distance between the short legs within the basic parameter and outside of the basic parameter Less than 2D, 2D, and 
1.5 d respectively. So we need to check the maximum limit of the distance. So in this case, here outside the basic parameter, meaning outside the basic parameter, the minimum distance between two consecutive shear legs are it is 400 watts, 69, the distance between this and it is. So we, are, so we are calculating and we are checking the maximum distance between two consecutive shear legs um, out of the basic parameter. So 469. So here the, the distance between two consecutive shear legs between the outer parameter and the basic parameter must be less than what? 2D. So 2D is nothing but it is 426. But here uh, it is 469. So it is you know, exceeding the maximum limit. So, in, the, in, in this case, we need to provide secondary shear reinforcements. So, here we need to provide secondary shear reinforcement in between of the main shear legs. So, here, if we uh, provide one shear leg between this and this, the distance will be reduced. And if we provide one shear leg here, one shear leg here, the distance between this and this will be what? reduced here we love this one sorry this one so in similar manner we need to provide what we need to provide secondary shear legs between uh, the uh, primary shear legs. So just we can copy this one. Simply we can put here in between these entities. We can put here or roughly here or and roughly here in between of the two and here. And we need to provide shear leg. I mean uh, the reverse it. So here we need to provide river set. But just like this. Copy this one. So just we need to provide just like this in order to reduce the distance between two consecutive shear legs located within the basic parameter and the outer parameter. So you can sorry So I have finished providing the secondary shear reinforcements 
in order to reduce the maximum distance between two consecutive shear legs. And here, within the basic parameter, the distance must be uh, the distance between two consecutive shear reinforcements uh, must be less than 1.5 d. So here we can uh, check it. That is 400 watt. This is 400 watt. So it is 1.5 d is nothing but it is 300 d. So here this one is it is still for 401. So we need to provide also one uh, reinforcement here in order to reduce the space. So I can check this distance. Sorry. Dimension unlike three hundred forty four. So one point five this it is what? It is three hundred twenty. So we need to provide uh, also secondary shell reinforcement here. Just like this. And we need to check this distance. Dimension aligned. Two hundred eighty-seven. It is okay because it is less than two hundred. I mean three hundred twenty. So, just I can extend this to this. So in this way we can, uh, uh, you know, provide the secondary shear reinforcements in order to reduce the tangential spacing of two consecutive shear reinforcements. So this is, uh, you know, the uh, radial arrangements of the shear reinforcement. So. Uh, we can uh, use also orthogonal arrangements just like this. So orthogonal arrangement can be used just using this kind of arrangement. This kind of arrangement we can we can use uh, we can uh, place the shear reinforcements at every set of river. Uh, so the number of leg uh, per uh, uh, every set of river uh, depends on the uh, amount of shear stress which is induced in the shear zone. So all those numbers can be uh, calculated but manually or it can be calculated using CSI self. So uh, you know this ex example is based on the radial arrangements of uh, the shear reinforcement. So this is for uh, you know the uh, when we use shear reinforcement or we can use uh, shear studies. Here we can use the shear studies just like this. So all the mechanical properties of the shear studies must be taken into account as we have already used for reinforcement bar. That is the reinforcement bar yield strength is what it is 500 megapascal. So the yield strength of all this material must be taken into account in order to use all those shear studies instead of uh, river ties. So we can use the river ties or we can use shear. Uh, studies here. This the here. This part is what you call this here study. This is a study, and this one is here study. Or that that is study rail. Study rail or that is a study support. This one. This is you know the metallic plate, and this one is it is the circular material, and the. Uh, the, the head is, it is, you, you know, it has a flat head. So we may use another set of uh, plate here, or we can avoid using the, uh, you know, the top sets of river. So this is the, you know, the detail of the uh, arrangements of the start rail. And uh, yeah, the previous one is the arrangements of uh, the shear reinforcements. This one. So I think uh, this is uh, all about for today's tutorials. Uh, so next time I will be showing you uh, the uh, detailed uh, designing of uh, punching shear of T20 
story building using CSISF software. And we, I, uh, we will see uh, also uh, just how to uh, detail the punch measure uh, reinforcement is using AutoCAD and the uh, the results uh, obtained from CSI. So, thank you very much. Next time uh, we will uh, be uh, meet with a very interesting topic. Bye bye.